because this is hitting the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. this is not hitting that thing, see? I wasn't doing that with the camera. Let's do it. Still kind of an odd angle. Should I still read what you're doing here? Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm um, ambi readable. Okay. <laughs> so, so you, you uh, talk story while he plays behind yeah, you? Yeah, I do. I do. We do shows uh, like that, and uh, we're about ready to, to uh, head off to um, Northern California wow. for our Northern California tour, if you will. Mm, and, that's um, cool. And uh, let me just uh, get this up right here. And, uh, yeah. So um, this is stories about uh, growing up in Hawaii and uh, in the dialect of, uh, of the locals, which is pigeon. And of course, it's nice if I had a little audience here, too, but that's okay. I mean, I'll yeah, well, if you guys want to move in. Yeah. Then that way I get to, get, to get to talk to somebody. Come on up, man. Yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah, it's all yeah. about the story. It's huh? all about the stories, man. Yeah, Come on yeah. up. Come on up. Come on up. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you much. You got about ten minutes, so don't, don't make oh. it too long, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, all set. Yep. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Kamaka Brown. Mahalo, mahalo, aloha. Gonna take you back to uh, some, as we say, uh, talk story, Hawaiian style. The, uh, the locals in Hawaii talk a pigeon, Hawaiian pigeon English. And T Dan's gonna do Hawaiian slack key, so it's all about the islands right now. And uh, here's one of my stories. So, my father won't get one job in the city, yeah? He said, no ways he was going to drive from like North Shore to Townside. So, us guys went go move punch bowl, eh? Oh, that means had to change school. Oh, junk, man, because I had all my friends from kindergarten in Wailua Elementary. I had to leave my homeboys, stay back in the country. I mean, I had my boys Frankie Nakapui, Rudy Ranya, Miles Makeda, Leonard Kazina. Those were my boys, you know? And us guys used to hang out by Kishinami store after school, waiting for the school bus. Lunchtime, we trade sandwich eh, like that. Us guys always trade our lunch. Eh? And all us guys, us guys was in love with Karen Kato. Oh, Karen Kato, the Japanese girl. Oh, her father owned Kato store. Eh? <laughs> and then Frankie, my boy Frankie, he used to say, oh, you know what? When I grow up, I'm going to get married to Karen. And us guys going to live inside the store. So we need to go shopping. <laughs> Everybody go laugh. What you mean you're going to live inside the store? He go, yeah. Us guys, when I get married to Karen Kato, I'm going to stay inside the store. So when the store open, no need to stand in line. I'm going to be right there. Oh, brah. And if people say, hey, what you doing? Cut line in front of everybody. Frankie would say, shut up. I live here already. I live inside the store. I'm not cutting in line. So Miles Magida go, oh, what is that? If you don't need to go shopping, why are you cutting in line? And then Frankie go, boy, let's forget the green stamps, you stupid head. I got to get the green stamps. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So, us guys went moved to Green Street, a eh? punch bowl. We stay inside an apartment for the first time. You know, when us guys live country, you could throw one stone, one rock as far as you could, and still, you're not going to hit any neighbor's house. That's country, right? But now, we stay in one, one two-story apartment eh? on the bottom floor and only had street parking. So my father was always complaining about no more parking by the apartment, eh? especially on weekends when the neighbors had parties like that. <sighs> now I live city side. Oh, I can hear the neighbors, you know, the neighbor kids and all that. <sighs> They're all over the place, man. You know, I can hear through the walls. My father would say, hey, just save electricity. No need to listen to our, our own radio, our own TV. Just listen to their TV through the wall. It'll save money. Yeah. And my mother, you know, she was getting used to apartment living, you know. In this small apartment, the washing machine was right out the back door, eh, the kitchen door. Plus, the clothesline was right there too. Eh? So, she go leave one box of washing soap by the washing machine. And then comment, she go, hey, I never remember using that much soap because the new box almost empty. Because every time I go outside, wash clothes, get less and less soap inside a box. What's up with that? Bambai, we figured this. We figured the neighborhood kids, you know, they're the ones a couple doors down. They was using our washing soap but a slide. 
Next time, they don't turn the light on when they stay washing the, their washing machine. They just kind of walk over and use my mother's laundry soap. Oh, them buggers just steal our soap, eh? So my father said, you know what? I'm going to fix them kids, man. So he would bring one empty laundry soap box, and he go fill them up with sand, eh? And then he said, Mama, you bring your soap box inside, okay? Don't leave them outside anymore. <laughs> so a couple of nights later, we hear one commotion eh, going down, down in the back, couple doors down. First, we hear one kid getting dirty leakings. Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we? And then we hear one female voice. Who put sand inside the washing machine, eh? I like to know who put sand. I like to know how the sand got inside the washing machine. <laughs> Turns out the neighbor kids was taking our soap and the parents never know. The parents go send the two kids over to apologize to my mother. They go bring some banana and they bring some mango like that. They go, I'm sorry, Mrs. Brown. I never mean for take. My mother said, gonna give you this and tell you I stay sorry like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, upstairs above us, get one Hapa Holy family. Yeah? They get two girls. One was more old than me yeah? and one was an airline stewardess. I think she worked for Aloha Airlines, eh? and the other was Leslie. She stayed high school. Eh? She was one cheerleader. I know because weekend she stayed run downstairs with her cheerleader outfit, eh? and I know the boyfriend go beep the horn, and then she go run downstairs with her cheerleader outfit. Oh, she had nice the kind of um, personality, eh? and me, I was the original stalker. Eh? I look into the Venetian blinds eh, out back when Leslie go hang clothes on the line right outside our doors because eh? their washing machine was close to ours. The mother, they go work, loves bakery and then she go wear the kind of white uniform and the kind of hairnet. And sometimes the mother would give my mother some day old bread and when my mother would bake her mango bread and she would go upstairs and give them too. And me for one thing, man, I used to like living the most about in the city was we had TV. Because living in a country, us guys never have TV, yeah? We live in the valley. And my uncle was one of the kind TV fix repair man. And he would give my father one TV that he would fix because the customer never come back for pay. Was on black and white Zenith TV. Ho, 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 ho. Was neat. And my father had invented remote control way before anybody would even think about remote control. You know, he would say, hey, boy, change the channel. And I would walk over there, change the channel. I was his own personal remote control. And then the antenna was the kind on top of the TV, yeah? the kind of rabbit ears. And I was like, oh, when we was downstairs in the apartment, couldn't get good reception. Yeah? So my father, you know, he would the kind, he would put on the tips of the rabbit ears. He could put the kind tin foil. Yeah? Plus, if it gets snow or lines on there, my father would make me move the antenna. Move them to the left, boy. So I go over there, I move them to the left. No, son, your other left. I go move them to the other left. Oh, most time the picture came in more clear, but sometimes, boy, go over there, put your hand on top of the antenna. So I stand over there watching the antenna where my father watched the game. Eh? Sometimes, sometimes get him just right. He go, boy, it's perfect. Leave him right over there. So I walk away, eh? then get snow. He go, boy, what you did? I said, I went let go, daddy. My father said, then no let go. Oh. I got to stand over there. So now I stay standing there until the program pow. And us, for the first time, we had our own telephone line. Ho, ho, ho. In the country, we had the kind of party line eh, where you pick up the phone and then you listen, get somebody talking. Eh? So we got to wait until they hang up and then we can make the call. What a junk. But now we live in the city side. Oh, man. All the telephone line, we get all to ourselves. So sweet. But, you know, nowadays, eh, we get the kind of voicemail, the kind of answering machine. Hey, when I was a small kid, we had that too. We had an answering machine. The phone ring, my father say, son, answer the phone. I had an answering machine. And then he say, son, who that? Call our ID. And then he say, take our message. Voicemail. You see, my father was really, really on top of it, even back in the day. But you know what? I did miss the hikes along the mountain trails in the Waimea Valley, skipping the smooth stones over the still water of the river. I do miss the sound of the neighbor's chickens walking him in the morning. I did miss the sing-song voices of the Filipino fishermen walking down the road with the burlap bags filled with fish and their sing-song voices over their shoulder. I was now learning all kinds of new stuff living in the city, and I was taking tips from that shop-looking guys on American bandstand with big clock. And I was learning this new dance called the twist, and I was keeping eye on the cheerleader upstairs all the while, 
making sure my hand was on the rabbit ears because daddy said, no, let go. Thank you. Maka Brown, thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Sure, the dialect kind of sounded a little bit familiar because, you know, I grew up in East LA, but it was a little different, you know? It was like, you know. 